Hey, this is Norm MacDonald here, and this is a message for all of Patrick's friends. Uh, I want you to stop picking on your friend Pat. After all, and I quote, his only crime was that he didn't find Norm MacDonald funny. Wait a minute here. I'm Norm MacDonald. Huh. And I am funny. Please continue insulting that fat loser. The Opie and Anthony subreddit has at this point been an active community for o &A fans for almost 10 years. The forum would become a mean-spirited hotbed of hyper-targeted harassment, mostly towards the now-defunct former hosts of a once-popular morning radio show. Such was the sub's reputation that, at their peak, Luis J. Gomez of rap metal comedy gang Legion of Skanks offered to pay $10,000 to purchase r slash Opie and Anthony. The offer was foolishly rejected by a short and googly sighted Space Edge, who vastly overestimated the market value of Antoine Cumia hoaxes and Fat Bob Kelly posts. And following the recent wave of one eyed totalitarianism from the Owen Day admin, the subreddit's well earned cachet was soon to plummet. In a bout of unprecedented spurgery following Space Edge's No Patrick ultimatum, the subredditors were now in a veritable frenzy. Thousands of regaled addicts would focus their collective attention on the infractions of a pig nosed moderator and ex-heroin addict. But rather than take his deserved lickings, Space Edge would instead wield his mighty banhammer in a frenzied retaliation against what he saw as an uncontrollable entity. Such was the extent of Space Edge's panicked banishments that a new subreddit of exiled refugees formed with the ambitious goal of supplanting their former home. R slash OPN Anthony boasted a moderation team of Space Nick Edge, Goo Gobbler and vaping paraplegic Braun Heiser. But it was the addition of Tater Peeler Joseph Cumia of the famed 82nd Airborne as moderator that raised most eyebrows. And despite the position being of no real consequence given the lack of real responsibilities given to Joe, he would bask in the spotlight nonetheless. As for Space Edge, much like his right eye, his world was about to be turned upside down. Joe Coletta, a former stand-up comedian who now stockpiles illegal weaponry, revealed how at college he attended the same electrical class as Space Edge, and how he turned out to be an annoying junkie I tried to avoid. He continued by explaining how Space Edge was ripping me off of some Xanax, before describing how he was invited to Anthony and Joe Cumia's homes for a documentary on podcasting. It was during an interview with a six foot one father of four that in a shit-faced stupor, Coletta unmasked his former classmate, handing over the private information of a subreddit admin to a jubilant Joe, desperate to turn the tables on those godforsaken terrorists. Space Edge's actual name is not something that will appear anywhere in this video. Although, even a potato-brained boomer like Joe could eventually figure that one out. Additionally, the identity of Space Edge has been a known fact in the ONA sub for years. And speaking from experience, once that cat is out of the proverbial bag, good luck putting it back in. Either way, Joe would stumble ahead in releasing Space Edge's full docs, in a now-deleted post gleefully anticipating the subreddit's inevitable demise. And despite Space Edge's appearance being an unfortunate part of public record at this point, Joe had provided some of the more creative pests, an armory filled with double-chinned ammunition to fire at the heavyset baghead. Having finally landed a long overdue blow to a subreddit he's waged ongoing war with, Joe was inevitably banned from r slash Opie and Anthony, and later from Reddit altogether. Meanwhile, Space Edge's unrelenting expulsion campaign exploded, as hundreds of accounts were purged by the moderation team. But it was not only posts pertaining to Patrick Tomlinson that carried such a penalty, with Patty Bo Fatty describing how just posting that faggot mod Space Edge's name gets you banned. Frequent 2001 claims to have been banned by Space Cunt, no reason given. Rather comically, Unknown Kid 96 was banned for saying I hope Space Edge becomes immune to Narcan, so he can die a painful heroin overdose. OAUK's elite use of high-level Photoshop techniques was awarded with an immediate ban for creating what looks like a Patrick Tomlinson ode to Space Edge. Alki Fuck suffered a similar fate, thanks to his artistic depiction of a wobbly-eyed Space Edge inserting heroin into his arm whilst affirming no more Patso posts. Meanwhile, Johnny Anal Bead's well-supported claim that Space Edge and Patrick Tomlinson kill, rape and eat black people saw him exiled from the old subreddit. This over-moderation of fat-bashing posts and wonky-eyed insults provided perfect fodder for the new subreddit's growing membership. Within one day, r slash OPN Anthony had amassed over 1,000 subscribers, before passing 2,000 a day later. On the third day came another 1,000, 
as more and more people grew tired of Space Edge's demented spiralling. Additionally, it was considered the old subreddit had become little more than a whack-bag style stomping ground of unironic Jim and Sam fans, with posts such as, Angry Yimmy was best Yimmy, the real person behind 9-11, Chip sucks sure, but I still have a soft spot for Ted Sheckler, and as Gunstore points out, their favourite Patrice moments and fucking Bobo jokes. And although much of this could be attributed to false flag style subterfuge, Monsignor's scurrility explains how those people used to linger at the bottom of threads. Now they're all that's left. As the spotlight on Space Edge further illuminated following Joe Cumia's big reveal, more and more of his checkered past would be exposed. For example, his Reddit posting history uncovered a series of comments on r slash shoplifting bragging how, over the past five months just from Apple, I've scored Beats Solo 3s, iPad minis and a pair of earpods. After receiving affirmation from a fellow kleptomaniac, Space Edge expressed his frustration at his local Apple store, locking down the iPads with special demo software that's impossible to get rid of, before boasting the further loot he shamelessly pilfered. But it was an incident at Dan's Vapor and Tobacco that cemented Space Edge's position as a dense mass of larcenous fat with absolutely no redeeming qualities whatsoever. The self-admitted shoplifter was caught via CCTV brazenly leaning over the counter of his favourite vape store, before stuffing his pockets with a $50 Gen 3 RX300 mod. In a now deleted social media post, at Dan Vapor and Tobacco shared the video before naming him directly as the perpetrator. A follow-up post to Instagram reaffirms Space Edge as the offender, with a full-profile picture of the petty criminal. Danny then describes how Space Edge steals and then once confronted blocks us and deletes both his IG account and Facebook account. As expected, this prompted a barrage of excitable posts to both subreddits, comically exposing Space Edge's oafish vape store heist. A flabbergasted redditor by the name OK Seriously Bro questioned the insane notion that a heroin junkie would shoplift vape products instead of paying for them. Brother Men Army asks, what kind of fucking homo shoplifts a vape pen? Before continuing with, real men steal something that provides high quality sound. Assumingly a nod to Vizio's impressive array of child-killing audio fidelity soundbars. Meanwhile, Don Myers also pitched in, nominating Space Edge as the $15 vape shop fugitive. Hundreds of posts followed, each mercilessly attacking the cross-eyed bandits for being such a fucking scumbag. Space Edge would face increasing pressure from within his own moderation team to overcome this bout of unwarranted pride and just bend the knee. In a moderation chat log chronicling Space Edge's lumbering downfall, Big Green Yamo is told that, like everything, you know this will die down in a few days, before replying with, not if things keep going the way they are. This is a good example of picking the wrong hill to die on. It's not going to end well. Space Edge stubbornly hit back, claiming he was getting sick of seeing Patrick posts, before stating not to have lost anybody of note. Later on, after being told by the toolman he'd be better off switching user accounts, Space Edge posits whether he should get the other place shut down, then blow this place up, before being warned by the toolman that such an act would open the floodgates. Eventually, Space Edge agreed to take on a more diplomatic approach, in a post confusingly named Amnesty, in which he stupidly appears to be forgiving the community for their transgressions against him. Space Edge admits that, I did go full retard over the Patrick stuff and could have handled it better. I apologise for that and right now the mods are unbanning all of the accounts that did not dox people. He then continues with, I admit that I fucked up, but I'm not going to take shit. And same goes with the other mods, so we are starting over before again threatening permabans for future rule violations. The trouble is, this was a far cry from the subreddit's desired outcome. They wanted Space Edge out, and given his continued mismanagement and neglect of the forum, in addition to his aforementioned faggotry, an almost unanimous wall of vocal opposition faced him. Space Edge was seen by most as your typical tyrannical hallway monitor, a petty thief and alleged recovering smackhead who craved unbending dominion over a fucking subreddit. And even his own moderation team had seen enough, with Big Green Yamo first to throw in the towel. Having told Space Edge, I'm done, I was going to be done a few days ago but wanted to stay around long enough to turn all this back, the admin's dope-headed reaction was to suggest nuking the entire subreddit rather than hand it over to somebody else, essentially suggesting that if he can't have it, nobody can. Bizarrely, Space Edge even denies being responsible for the vape store theft, claiming how there are like five people in the area with the same name as me, 
but this does not explain Dan's vapour and tobacco posting his exact face as the culprit, nor does it explain how only three people in the entire United States apparently share his name. But as that age-old saying goes, play junkie games, steal junkie prizes. And despite stating the reason I won't step down is because I know it drives them nuts, Space Edge faced renewed criticism from fellow moderator and calorie rapist, The Toolman, who commented the following. I hate to say it, Space Edge, but I think you should step down. No, I am not trying to usurp this subreddit for myself, but this place went strong for nearly 10 years. You barely showed up, and when you did, it's always caused to stir. This final incident put it over the edge. You got lost. In typical felonious junkie fashion, Space Edge now found himself well and truly isolated. But rather than do the right thing and pass on admin privileges to somebody who gives a shit, Space Edge offered the following. You are right. I created this huge issue that shouldn't have been. What's done is done. Demodding everyone and nuking the place within the hour. And even in the midst of the tall man's final cries of don't nuke it you fuck just because you can't have it doesn't mean no one should, Space Edge was at least crystal clear in how this saga ends. Fat boy getting his own way. The original Opie and Anthony subreddits first went through a phase of no image posts, seemingly an effort to curb the flow of relentless abuse. But then it happened. After almost 10 years of uninterrupted service, to over 27,000 former fans of a once popular morning radio show, r slash Opie and Anthony was finally brought to its knees. From Amy Schumer to Anthony Cumia, Patrick Tomlinson to Logan Lynn, Joe Cumia to Jim Norton, this sub has significantly affected the lives of so many titans of comedy and entertainment, whilst providing an exceptionally autistic outlet for this throng of psychotic alcoholics and toddler murdering audio enthusiasts. Such a place was never destined for a graceful climax, and it's only fitting that this retarded sequence of events would serve as the subreddit's final act.